I'd like to invite everyone to please take a seat so that we can get started on time. The format for tonight's meeting will have a brief 15 minute PowerPoint presentation by our folks at Cropper GIS. Uh, they'll explain the committee's work that's taken place thus far and explain a little bit about how to read the maps at our four map stations tonight. And then we'll adjourn for a uh, discussion, open discussion with our committee members around our maps. We do have four map stations set up around the room. We have one to my right here, we have one at the front entrance, and then we have two down this hallway here. Tonight kicks off our, uh, our survey, um, actually it kicked off last night, my correction, um, at our uh, session last night we kicked off the public survey. The survey will run from November 15th last night through December the 17th. Uh, we invite you to take part in that and encourage all your friends neighborhood, and neighbors uh, to take part. Um, all, the, all of me the meeting materials, the survey links, uh, availability for the comment form are all available on our website at www.bcps.org. If you follow the resources button at the bottom of the page, you can find the link for the Central Area Elementary School Boundary Study. Uh, on that page, you can find videos of all previous meetings. This committee has met three times uh, prior to our public information sessions to refine and develop and discuss the four options that they have bought for you tonight, options A, B, C, and D. Uh, we have solicited uh, close to a thousand comments of public feedback that are posted on that website, feedback from the public, uh, sharing their opinions with the committee that all went into the, the development and formation of these maps. So we have heard you and we welcome you here tonight. Uh, we, we truly appreciate the interactiveness and the feedback from the public in this uh, rather, you know, we, we appreciate the size and the scope of this boundary study. And uh, so we truly appreciate you being here tonight. We appreciate your engagement with Baltimore County Public Schools and we are here to listen to you. Um, so again, um, make sure you're availing yourselves to the website. Um, uh, make sure the, uh, uh, take the survey. Um, that's one of the, going to be one of the key feedbacks that the committee is going to look for when they reconvene in January um, before they make a final recommendation to the board. Um, and just a few safety briefings. Um, please take a moment to note your exit signs. Uh, in the event of an emergency such as a fire alarm, we would uh, exit preferably out the main doors that you came in and to the right. Um, there's also a set of exit doors here that lead immediate outside. Uh, we hope you all take a moment to sign in. Pink sheets outside in the hallway for our observers, uh, green sheets for our committee members. In the event that we did have to evacuate, we would use those sheets to make sure, uh, we take attendance and make sure that we've accounted for everyone. Um, again, we thank you all for being here tonight. Oh, and restrooms are uh, out to the hallway and to the left. Uh, there's restrooms at the end of the hallway. Please do not proceed into any other areas of the building. Thank you again for being here. And with that, I'm giving it over to Mr. Matt Cropper from Cropper GIS. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you all for coming. Um, you see some familiar faces and some new faces tonight. So we're really, really glad that you guys took some time out tonight to come and learn about this process and talk with committee members and staff and consultants. I am Matthew Cropper with Cropper GIS Consulting. I also have James Cooper here from our office. Um, you'll notice that BCPS staff and consultants have an orange tag with a green lanyard and all committee members have a green lanyard with a, a green name tag on it. So as you, as when we break from this presentation, feel free to engage with committee members because uh, they're familiar with the process, how to interpret data and things like that. Um, once we get done with the, with the presentation. So what's the purpose of tonight? So tonight is for you to learn how this process has been working, to review maps, which we have a set of maps, two sets in this corner back here. There's one set on that wall and one set over here. So there's four options that we're sharing with you tonight. These are all duplicate sets so that you can spread out and get close to a map and then uh, avoid any bottleneck if you want to get up close and look at the data. We give you some uh, extra maps to look at. Most importantly, we want you to fill out a survey. So there is a yellow card that you should have picked up when you came in 
That gives you a QR code to get right to the survey and also a link. Or you can go on the web page and, and get access to the survey if you navigate to the boundary study section for this central area study. But the survey is a critical part. So although it's important to have conversations with committee and staff around the maps and for us to hear your conversations, to hear your concerns and thoughts, it's most important for you to fill out the survey so that every committee member, even those who are not here and the public can benefit from your input and uh, we can all basically look and benefit from all input that's being provided as opposed to just talking to one person. So the survey is an important part that's, that's being kicked off uh, starting last night. So the process is guided by policy and rules that the school board uh, has, has uh, approved and, and considered. It's policy and rule 1280. This process is facilitated by an independent consultant and that is us, Cropper GIS Consulting. But it's driven by a community committee. This committee is made up of parents, teachers, principals, community members, uh, people who live in this area who give us valuable input regarding um, areas where kids walk, where, where, where traffic patterns are, where there's sidewalks, and all those different dynamics that us from out of state may not know. The committee gives us that local, local input. And they really, they are the ones who are voting on our recommendation when this is all said and done. We as consultants are just facilitating and giving, putting data together. Uh, we're helping to create options based off of their input. And the committee's deliberating and working through this and, and actually helping to drive the, the formulation of maps uh, through their meetings. And ultimately this committee will be the ones making a recommendation to the uh, school board. And one map is what will be recommended to, uh, for the school board to consider when this is all said and done. Like I said, Cropper GIS Consulting, this is the kind of work we do across the United States. We've also worked with Baltimore County Schools for uh, several years on boundary studies across the county and honored to be working here with you guys on this, uh, on this particular effort. So the, like I said, the committee's all made up of community members. We have 78 members on this committee, so a large group that we're working with in this study. 19 of them are principals, and those are non-voting members, but they give a lot of valuable input uh, regarding the schools and also the areas that, that, that they, they work in and live in. 19 teachers and staff representatives on this committee, 38 parents, so two parents from each school sit on this committee within our study area. And then there's two area educational advisory council chairs who, um, who are also sitting on the committee. We tell these committee members, although you, you're, you're here to give us input about your neighborhood and your community, that we ask you to take off your parent hat and put on your committee hat when you get to these meetings and think about what's best for all children in this study area, even if it may impact the area that, that the committee member may live in or um, the school that they're affiliated with, to think about the big picture and what's best for all students in this area in coming to a solution. Um, they've met seven, the, they will meet seven times, September through January. We've already met a couple times, and we have two more meetings, committee meetings after this. Um, and then, like I said, ultimately uh, providing a recommendation that's going to be presented to the Board of Education. Here's our process, the timeline. You can see that we had a meeting last night. We are actually here tonight on the Lock Raven uh, session. And we've had three meetings before, but we have two more meetings after this. And uh, the next meeting with the committee will be January 4th. And then there's one on January 25th. Um, public is welcome to come observe those meetings if you want. You can come watch the committee's work in action. Uh, but you do, you're not participants in that pr process. It's a different process than tonight where the committee's doing their work, but you guys are welcome to come watch. All these meetings are also live streamed and recorded, so you can also watch from your couch if you want, um, and then if, you don't, if you don't have time to, uh, to get out to the actual meetings. Um, this meeting tonight is also being recorded, and last night's meeting was recorded as well. Um, <clears throat> once the committee is done with their work, uh, the blue boxes, it, it's, uh, they deliver their draft recommendation is presented to the board. It is still draft at that point, and then that recommendation is provided on February 27th to the school board. Um, once that's presented to the, to the board, they open a public hearing on March 6th that will actually be in this high school auditorium. And they'll invite the public to come, come listen. Uh, they'll be on, at, in the auditorium and uh, probably at a table, and the public will be able to come up to a microphone and express your thoughts about the, the, the boundary, the recommendation that's been provided. So they're there to listen to you and another, another engagement uh, process there. 
The board will make a final decision on March 19th, is what the expectation is, on a plan. And so everything is draft until the board approves that plan. So nothing is set in stone until the board approves a plan. And so we still have some time to make sure that we do, uh, the committee does everything that they feel is best for, for this study. So why do we need to do this? There are, uh, by 2024, there are three elementary schools that are projected to exceed 115% of the utilization. Some are already overcrowded, others are expected to get worse or, uh, or become overcrowded. And you can see those are listed here. So the purpose is to relieve schools that have, uh, that have overcrowding or projected to be overcrowded and to maximize use of space in this area with schools that may have some available space. Try to trade off some area to make sure to, to make it uh, equitable in terms of amount of space that's available in schools in this study area. This is our study area. You can see there's a very large swath of, of territory in Baltimore County. So um, you can see the schools that are here that are, that are involved. The expectation is that any area within this study area could be impacted, although we're trying to keep that at a minimum. You'll see the impacts are relatively low. If you look at the, the, the overall numbers, I think over 9,000 students in this area, but there are around 300 to 500 ish students uh, being impacted right now. So um, anything outside of the study area is not, is not uh, part of the study and it was, will not be impacted as part of this process. So our objectives are to provide that capacity relief, like I said, and also to maintain or increase the diversity among schools to, to, to reflect the diversity of this study area, of the region. So we look at what the demographics are and um, in all the different demographic attributes of this, of this whole area and try to see if there's any way to m either maintain those demographics of schools or make them closer to the average of, for this, this area, if at all possible. Those are our two primary considerations that have been, um, that, are, that are identified in Rule 1280. But there are secondary considerations that the committee is also looking at, trying to balance all of these in, in, in tr as they work through an, uh, options and a recommendation. So maintain the continuity of neighborhoods. Try not, to, try not to draw the line down the middle of a residential street. We've heard a lot from some communities where there's some maps that are doing that, and we hear you, and those are things that we're trying, that, we, that really the value of this process is getting that input from you just to bolster the work the committee's doing and, 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 keep, and get input from as many stakeholders as possible. Be mindful of the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns, so walkability. Try to minimize the ton of times any individual students who are reassigned. Not only be mindful of the current data, which we're working with the end of year 22-23 data for our estimates, but also be mindful of the future and what's projected. The committee has pro enrollment projection data, future housing information, things like that that they're also looking at as they work through this process. Location of feeder school boundaries and feeder patterns. So, this is only an elementary boundary study process. No middle school or high school zone lines or designations are going to change. So wherever you're zoned for middle and high school, that doesn't change no matter what as a result of this. But what may change is the percentage of an elementary school that goes to a middle school. And so we're tracking that and looking at how much of an elementary school gets split to a middle school. Ideally, you'd like to have 100% of an elementary go to a middle school. If you have to split it, it's more ideal to have it be a balanced split. You want to try to avoid very small splits. So thinking of children growing up in elementary, making friends, and when they go to middle school, if you have, say, 3% of an elementary going to a different middle, that puts those, the, the kids in a, in, a, in a sort of an awkward environment where they don't know many people. And um, so trying to bolster those social dynamics that kids have made going through elementary and have some familiar faces when they get to middle school. Other things that we're looking at are ge geographic features. So trying to draw the lines down major roads, highways, railroads, creeks, water bodies, those types of things are usually aligned with best practices and in, in when you start looking at boundary changes. So the committee has done a lot of work to date. I think they've looked at about 16 different maps up so far. They have, they've narrowed that down to four maps tonight for you to look at. Um, and looked at a lot of data, you'll see that there are statistics that, that accompany each set of maps, and that shows you some of the data that the committee has been evaluating as well. Um, but again, everything is draft as this process co uh, continues with the committee. It's even draft when it leaves the committee's hands and gets to the board. One option being recommended, nothing's final until the board approves a plan. You'll see on the map there's planning blocks. 
little small, uh, we take each attendance area and break it up into small pieces. Think of them like pieces, puzzle pieces. Um, and the, the intent of these planning blocks is for people to understand how many kids live in small subsets of the study area and how many students would, would move if you moved an area one way or the other. So the planning block data shows you a planning block number and then below that number is the number of kids that live inside each of those planning blocks. That kind of helps you get an understanding. And the, the, the large scale maps uh, don't have all of the planning blocks labeled on these particular maps, but there is an interactive map that, um, that, that you can go to and it shows all the details. If more you zoom in, you got a lot of good information on, on that map. And uh, we'll have those with us as well to help uh, if you have any questions tonight about what planning block you may be within. Like I said, we have stats that accompany the maps to kind of show you, uh, I always say, look at the maps and then look at the data and then kind of try to look at them together and correlate them together because it's a lot of information to try to consume and, and look at and understand all at one time. We have data such as capacity, the state rated capacity numbers, uh, the end of the year enrollment, Another part of this process is, is, uh, is part of the effort the district is, is undertaking is getting preschoolers back to their home schools and getting away from uh, the regional pre-K programs and giving the pre preschoolers an opportunity to go to school at their home school. And so we're estimating those, those numbers as well as what would be the impact once those preschoolers go back to their home school so that we can be proactive and give them space to be able to, 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 to make that change. You'll see the post-grade uh, pre-K enrollment, that post-movement slide uh, line right here. And then there's uh, utilization numbers. It's just that's how full is the building. If it's 100%, it's 100% full. If it's 110, that means it's 10% over its capacity. And then there's over-under numbers that show you how many seats are actually available or how many seats they are over 100%. So for each option, we have estimated enrollment in the data. So you can see if you want to know how many kids are they thinking are going to be in the building in this option at this school, this is what you would reference. And that's on the table. We also have utilization. This is what I like to look at more um, in terms of how full the building is. What's the percentage of capacity for current and then each particular option. Demographic data, we have race and ethnicity, and we also have some income, uh, uh, income and English language learner data so that you can kind of see how, how that those, all the demographics are current and with each option and what the impact may be on uh, demographic characteristics of the schools. We have impact tables. This shows you how many total students would be impacted in any particular option. And then you'll see the green and tan cells help you understand how many kids are moving from one school to another. And so you can see in this, in this sample, option A, 51 students move from Hampton to Cromwell Valley in option A. And so looking at the tan lines kind of gives you that indicator of how individual schools moves and the total of those tan numbers roll up to the total number impacted. And this is feeder patterns. This shows you the percentage of a school that feeds from elementary to middle school. And you can see that, um, that in, for every option and also the current. And then walk zones. So how many kids currently are within the, the BCPS established walk zones and how many are there in the options so that we can understand the impact on walkability for, for any particular option. So like I said, we have four maps tonight. Um, there is an online interactive map, uh, croppermap.com slash BCPS CES 2023, and that's a good, a good uh, resource to use for um, being able, the more you zoom in, you can, you can see a lot more data shows up. You can turn on and off the options. You can turn on the planning blocks and see the data there. And you can type in an address that tells you where you're going. Um, if you click on the map anywhere, it'll tell you either green or where your current zoning is and where you would be in any option. And if it's a green notification, it's, you're not impacted. If it shows up in red, that means you are impacted in one of the options. So um, it's a good resource to use. And then all of the data, all of the information that we're sharing with you and everything that the committee has looked at up to date is available online. Uh, the notes, pictures of the maps, markups, everything is online for you guys to look at if you choose to do so. And that's at bcps.org. There's actually a boundary study section on the main web webpage and go to the central area elementary study 
to find more information about that. These are the maps. One of the things you'll note is we have a current map and then we have A, B, C, and D. When you get to the options, you'll notice the black outlines and those represent the current zones. So you can see how the option may uh, deviate from the current zones and where areas may be shifted. And so um, that's A, B, C, and D. So you can see that. And the committee members will also help, help you interpret the maps if you have any questions about that. Um, so tonight is more of a gallery walk style format. It's not a format where we ask the public to come up to the mic and speak. Um, it's, we find in our experience it's best, this is really a data collection effort for us. We want to get as much input as possible. So the gallery walk format we've found to be the, the most success in getting as mu much input as possible. Have conversations with us and committee members around the maps, but fill out that survey so that everybody can benefit from every, every single person's input. Um, and we will all be around the maps uh, once we finish this presentation and the green lanyards are the ones to look for if you want to talk with committee or staff. Um, so there are other ways to provide input. We also have a general comment form that's been running since the start of the process. Uh, we've seen a lot of you guys have already been active in that and we've got a lot of, I think Chris said over a thousand comments so far so a lot of uh, you're doing a lot, everything that we're hoping you were do, doing to give us input as it goes as it continues the survey is really dedicated for this with focus on these four maps so i would really encourage you to uh to look at the survey that's really what we're looking for now um and that survey runs from november 15th to december 17th so you have a good over a month to share with your community community um, friends, neighbors, people who can also participate in this survey to, ma to, to get us, uh, to let us know what they think. It's also available to translate in multiple languages and it can be taken on any particular device. And the final way that you can also participate is that public hearing on March 6th that will be here in this auditorium. So I encourage you to also do that uh, as to, to engage with the school board. We've got our next committee meeting on January 4th uh, at six o'clock, and this is at Carver, uh, the Carver Center. And so uh, we welcome you guys to come watch that. But, um, but now I think is the time where we invite you to come to the maps. Uh, so please feel free to spread out. Committee members will also spread out. And to thank you so much for coming tonight. And we look forward to talking with you around the maps.